Hello everyone and welcome to this week's ExtendScript tutorial. In this one, we're gonna be going over how to read and write JSON inside of ExtendScript itself. We're essentially just going to be creating a function that will create a JSON file, which contains some comp data, and we'll also create one that can go back in and read any file we give it, and then tell us what is contained within it. So if you go to W3Schools and check out JSON, you can see that it's just JavaScript, but it's in object notation, and that's what it stands for. It's essentially just like creating objects in programming languages, where you have a variable with the object, and then a bunch of properties with values. So in this case, you have a name called John, the age, and the city. Since we are more geared towards Adobe programs, we're gonna use it for more things like compositions and layers and properties like that. So what I have is a JSON file that we're gonna be creating that has the comp name, my comp, the width, which is 1920, the height, which is 1080, and the num layers, which is three. And of course, each one of these has their own type of variable. This one is a string, and there's also some integers, and you can also use arrays as well. So we're gonna open up a new extend script file, and we're gonna start off by wanting to create a function to create a JSON file. All right, and all we need to do is give it some data that we want to put into the file. Well, because JSON files use object notation, we need to create an object. So I can just create a variable called object. And in order to create an object, it needs to have brackets and end in a semicolon, of course. Now you can put in the properties in here and just make them one line, um, or you can expand this out like a function and then write them in here. So what I can do is say comp name, and then we need a colon to end the name of that property. And then the comp name is gonna be a string in our case, and we'll just say my comp. And then to go into the next value, you want to add a comma, and then you can just keep typing. So the width, instead of having a string enclosed in quotations here, we'll have a integer for 1920. Then we can go down and do height, 1080, and then something else like num layers, number of layers in the composition is, let's just say three. So you don't need to add a comma to the last property inside of your object, just the ones preceding it. So now we have an object variable. Um, inside of our create JSON function, we're gonna just take one argument and that's going to be the information of the object that we want. So I can just say object or I can say JSON object, whatever. But since it's just a regular object, we'll just say object. Now we need to define what the file path and name is going to be. So I can just say uh, JSON file as a variable and we're gonna create a new file object. Now, arbitrarily, this file may not exist on your hard drive yet, but we still need to define where it's going to be. So in my case, I'm just gonna put it on my desktop. So inside of double quotes, I reference the relative location of my desktop and the name of the JSON file, we'll just use test.json here. So I'll say test.json. And now whether that file exists or not, we have a variable saying there's might be something or there could be something in the future there uh, in that location. And all we have to say is if our JSON file dot exists, then we want to do something. But we actually want to say the inverse of that and say uh, if it does not exist. So if our JSON file does not exist by using an exclamation mark to invert the logic, um, then we want to create it. And the way we create a file um, inside of ExtendScript is we have to open the file and then we have to write the stuff to it and then close it. The reason we have to do it in this specific order is uh, we have to open it up with a specific type of uh, sort of intention. We tell it whether we want to open it up to read it or write it by using the letter W or R, and then we put in the data and then close it to make sure that it doesn't remain open in the programming language. So if our JSON file does not exist, we're gonna grab that JSON file and open it. And again, we're gonna, in this case, we wanna write some data, so we're gonna tell it W, we're ready to write. And then we're going to say JSON file.write. And then what we have to put inside of here is the information we're going to write. Now, the way it essentially works with JSON is when you're storing data into files, what you wanna do is convert it to strings because text can be read by any programming language. And then once it reaches its destination, you will use a function called json.parse, which converts that string of text back into an object. So what we wanna do is just say JSON, in all caps, dot stringify, and we wanna stringify our object. So the stringify method will take any JSON object and convert it into a string, which is basically, um, for example, 
just a string of text that contains all of this information here. And then of course, as mentioned, we also need to grab our file and close it. So one thing you want to take into note is if you're not connected directly to After Effects or another application, um, JSON will not be included inside of the data. So if we go through the data browser here, we can't see any JSON, but if I connect it to After Effects, then now you can see we have JSON included. So if we connect the script directly to a program, we don't need to include an external JSON file. But if you do, you would essentially just need to put it in the same location, uh, JSON2.js, and say include JSON2.js. So now that we're inside of After Effects and connected, I'm going to go ahead and run it and see if we can get our file to generate. So looking here on my desktop, looks like it's created our test JSON file with our object stringified into here, which is awesome. And it even has the proper variable types, which is a string here, some integers. And now we can go ahead and move on uh, to either changing the values and trying again. Say for example, just say 3000 by 4000. And actually in this case, what it's saying in the logic is that if the file does not exist, then we want to write the data. But what if we just want to overwrite the data well, what we can do is just simply get rid of that logic and it will overwrite it. So if I run it again, open up the file, you can see it's now been updated to those values. So we know that our write function is working. Now let's go ahead and see how we can read a JSON and run through everything inside of it and get what the names are. So I'll create a function called read JSON file. And I just want a file to be inputted here. First thing we need to do is open up our file to be read. And just like before up here, we're going to say open, except instead of W, we're gonna say R for read, because we're gonna read some data from within it. And then I'm just gonna create a variable called data, which is gonna contain all of the text inside of there, which again is just a an object in string form. And then I'm gonna say file.read, and this will read everything and just push it into there. Then of course, I wanna make sure I close that file because I have noticed that if you forget to close a file, try and delete that file, it'll say unable because it's still open in whatever program you're using. So then you'd have to shut down uh, After Effects or Extend Script and that would just be a pain. So now that we have closed our file, what we can do is go ahead and do the opposite of our json.stringify and that is to say json.parse. And this is to convert a string into a more formal mathematical object. And that in this case would be an object. So what we're going to do is bring in our data, which again is going to be the string we read from our file, and it's gonna parse it. So what I'm gonna do is set data equal to json.parse itself. That way we can recycle that variable and not add any extra lines of code. And what I'm gonna do now is create a for loop. And what I'm gonna do is say for var i in the object data. We now have a data object, and this is gonna contain again all of the information in that JSON file. So what we're gonna say is we're going to write the line just so we can see the variables speed past here in the uh, JavaScript console. You can use the data browser as well, but I just wanna see them displayed really quickly. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to say I, which is going to give us the name of each of the properties. So if I load up the test JSON file, the first I is going to be comp name, the second one is going to be width, and the next one is going to be height, etc. So I is just representative of the property names. So I'm gonna say the property name plus some text is gonna be equal to our data object, and we're going to look at that property right there, what that value is gonna be. So this is essentially just gonna tell us first time through, comp name is gonna be equal to our data i, our data object is this whole thing, and the i is representative of comp name. So looking at this whole thing at comp name, what's the value? My comp. So we're gonna go through and do that for each one of them. So now what we need to do is go ahead and instead of create our JSON file, what we need to do is read our JSON file, and we need to pass through a file object so what I'm gonna do is just um, grab this right here, which is our actual file object, and run it. And as you can see, we get comp name equals my comp, width equals 300, height 400, num layers three. So this is just how you can quickly read through all of the properties in there. Um, you can always add more logic in here. For example, you could say if data i 
is greater than, say, 500. Say you needed to check if a certain piece of data was over a number. This would essentially get rid of our num layers and not display it. So if I run it, you can see it's going to display actually only width and height. It's going to also ignore the string of text. So just make sure you go in and put any cases you want if you want to avoid uh, getting some of the data. But in my case, I'm just looking at all of the data contained in this object, and uh, we're just looking at how to simply read and write JSON files. Of course, if you need more learning, there's plenty of resources online for learning JSON files, especially on uh, w3schools.com. This has a full description of how you can define them, construct them, uh, and do all sorts of different complexities with them. So that's going to do it for this week's video. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. Leave a comment down below if you have any questions or comments. And of course, I hope you enjoyed. We'll see you in the next one.